I'm 56 years old now and uh, I never seen any fire engine in surrounding this area. Even when there's someone uh, had an arson to the other house, even when the old grasses are, are growing up, we haven't had anyone even educating us about how to prevent fire and how to prevent uh, environment uh, until this year where Working on Fire came out to us and started educating us. This area has a problem area historically. They have hundreds of fires every year because of the makeup of the area with um, a lot of forestry, a lot of rural communities surrounding the forestry areas. And last year in the Natal Midlands, we had in the region of 25,000 hectares of land burnt. A lot of forestry going into hundreds of millions of rand in Natal. The Fire Protection Association in Richmond has been going for just over a year. I've been on a FireWise course with Working on Fire and this is where the FireWise initiative has come in. It's a great benefit to the Fire Protection Association because what it's allowing us to do is, is with our limited funding, it is allowing us to get into the rural areas where possibly 90% of our fires or our fire problems emanate from. What we also wanting to achieve here is actually to try and, and, and congenize people, um, fireworks, with the ultimate aim of actually fusing them into the existing fire um, FPA in this area. That is our ultimate goal here. Arson, I would say, if you go back on, on record, would probably account to 90-95% of your fires. We've got so much of, um, of, of our plantations here which are actually under land claims. You know, sometimes then uh, when communities realise that, you know, there's nothing that's actually um, happening in terms of their land claims, what they then do, they then actually put fires into our, into our plantations so that at least, you know, um, the government would actually uh, respond to their, to their requests for more and more land. So that has actually caused quite a lot of problems in the area here. But that is now being addressed, you know. Employees would feel that what we pay them is very little. So if for them to actually negotiate the issue of increasing wages, what they will then do, they will then set up plantations, you know, and, and try, trying to get attention from us. One of the things we've got to get through to the communities is if they fight with their neighbours, as fire is not the tool to go and sort out the problem. The, the tool is to sit down around the table and negotiate and, and sort out the problem. Sometimes uh, you find that when you go to the communities, because of the past uh, experiences that they've had with Mondi and I also and all the forensic companies before, uh, they don't trust us with, 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 with sometimes whatever we come up with. So if there is uh, working on fire, an independent board like coming to them, uh, informing them about fire, they 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 they, they, they seem to come closer to those people. And Zanele Ngumalo from Worth on Fire and myself had to sit down to strategize as to how we could actually address the issue of um, fires in this area here. So we then uh, contacted the, the, the local traditional structures in the area here, you know, to try and actually have the communities in this area working very closely with us. When I first came here, um, those areas were burnt. It was really difficult and also when you're telling people about you mustn't put this uh, next to this because it's a, it's, a, it's a big fuel load. Uh, it's very difficult to change people, I mean, people's behaviors, but I see we, we're getting there, we're getting somewhere, something is happening. 
committee la rame me la si working on fire nam thani sin le tele e bulo le zaza shodi la mafya pizzas ne chocho thank you lo la baba zo azo ba ufo so stole lo talo kala el zo wa zuguti sil me sil sil bega nda wen le zazi shaga cool sil fagamant the committee that I work with that they form they very active people this thing about uh, the dangers of fire they are, they've taken it very seriously when I grow up, they used to have gardens, big gardens. They used to have a big uh, field of uh, millies and everything. And due to the fire, and it damages lots of things of which people were not aware. When they, you're putting fire all the time, it damages up the soil. And uh, it ends up, you cannot grow anything up. And since we had this uh, session with Zanelli, it's been, been a, a big change. And by this time of the uh, year, there's already no grass around, it's been bent all over. As people will be taught in such a way that they will know when to do their fire breaks. I mean, the defensible spaces between the houses, how to do the fire breaks, and looking at the things that will make the fires burn easily around their houses. That will be very good. Be wise, be fire wise. We need to grow up the youth from the age of seven up to upwards that to know about the danger of fire. By doing that, I think we'll be passing the message to the right people because they are the people who normally they play with fire, uh, they think they is a fun to play with fire. And also, they'll be passing this to the parents and we had discovered in most of the houses that the, the youth as young as seven years old, they start educating their mothers and fathers. They said, no, don't burn the fire today. It's not a right uh, day to do the fire. It's a danger day. And uh, don't do the fire outside because the wind is blowing, of which before they used to, they never knew anything about that. Uh, the training is going to be a good thing for, for the kids especially. Because they, you find that uh, they, they cause the fires mostly. Because you find that um, where they, they are fighting Mondi, people are fighting Mondi, uh, there are older people who are causing fires. Uh, the, you find that those fires, the, you find them inside our plantation, but when the fire comes from the community to our plantations or the fire the, 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 the damages the community felt and all that, it, mostly it comes where the kids are alone at home and they are playing with fire and then all that fire, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's uncontrollable. So it's better if they know about danger of fire. What we're doing here, it's like um, a neighborhood watch where you check that uh, your, your neighbor is protected uh, from the fires. The fire, that, the fire that will start from your property will not destroy your neighbor. And making sure that when you, you know which, which is the right day to burn. I mean, when you burn, what have you got to do? You have to inform your neighbors so that it's easy to help you. Have the fire pizzas ready and um, you must know the weather, the fire danger index, I mean, is it good for you to burn? The main thing is to teach the community to be able to burn fire breaks using their own equipment, to burn fire breaks around their houses, to burn fire breaks around where they've got crops. If they're going to burn for cattle, to burn specific areas, because what happens is they burn everywhere, and then at this time of the year you take you look around and see how thin a lot of cattle are because they've burnt all the grass and there's no grazing. It's very easy to, to put the fire in, but to put it out is a different story. The importance of having a workshop will that there'll be a lot of people that will be reached because uh, it's very difficult to reach them. Because sometimes when I'm here, some of them are at work. So it's going to be, uh, we, we're making it at the weekend. So hopefully there'll be a lot of people attending. The, the main thing is very difficult to actually get into the rural areas and get into the communities because they're so uh, far spread. So by having something like today with a workshop where we can try and get in a couple of hundred people in, those people will then hopefully take what they've heard today and speak to, to their siblings, speak to their spouses, speak to their neighbours and um, you know, pass on the information that they've had today because obviously fires doesn't only affect forestry, doesn't only com affect commercial farms. You have fires that get away end up, ending up with houses burnt down 
I think there's statistics we don't even know about. We are very grateful uh, about the uh, Black One Fire. I think uh, they need to go all around the KwaZulu Natal. And I think by doing that, they'll be preventing lots of lives that have been lost through the wildfire.